Good morning, my name is Roxanne Roberts. I will be doing diabetes, educating a patient on diabetes. I am from the College of Mount St. Vincent. Now, diabetes mellitus. I'm gonna quickly um, state the key factors in diabetes. These are glucose, isolate, insulin, the liver. So what is glucose? Glucose is a sugar, simple sugar, and the body needs it to survive. It's basically energy, it provides energy for the body. It fuels the cell. However, it cannot enter the cell without the help of insulin. And now I'll get to insulin. What exactly is insulin? Insulin is a form of hormone. It regulates the amount of sugar that is amount that is in the body. It attaches to the sugar and it takes it to the cell. Now, there are two types of diabetes. There is the type one and type two. Actually, there's three types: type one, type two, and gestational diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is where you're born with it or it's genetic. Type 2 can be managed by exercising and dieting and sometimes, um, not sometimes, it can be genetic as well. Gestational diabetes is where you develop when one becomes pregnant. Um, it may leave when, after you've given birth. Um, for others they're not so lucky so they still have diabetes after the pregnancy there are certain signs and symptoms to look out for when you have diabetes so when you have diabetes there is a possibility that you your blood sugar may spike or it might get lower and the spiking of the blood the blood um, sugar is called hyperglycemia and when it drops below 60 it's um hypoglycemia so your glucose ridge should between should be between 60 and 100 if it's below that it's low and if it's above that it's high so signs and symptoms to look out for when you have low glucose level you're sweaty confused lightheaded and um, this is just saying that listen your blood sugar is low and you need like simple glucose which is like simple is a candy will do fruit juice will do this is just to get the blood sugar to rise what it what the glucose does is um it sticks to the proteins of the vessel it becomes hard and it forms plaque um it affects the heart the blood flow is going to get narrow and cause um stroke you can get neuropathy or hypertension normally when um a patient has um diabetes they tend to have uh, um high blood pressure so if a, in a diabetic patient they tend to look out for two things um, issues with their blood pressure it might be high or low or issues with of course their diabetes level their sugar level because they go hand in hand they when you have um, diabetes patients they tend to have wound healing problem some sometimes because sometimes they're not aware of the fact that they even get like a cut a cut so they don't realize that they have a womb and this why this is why you often tell diabetic patients to wear shoes in the house because they're not aware of the fact that they get like a cut they have a wound and they have a slow wound healing process this is because the blood is not flowing um properly and therefore they it doesn't have enough oxygen 
to reach to the wound area to heal it properly like i said the glucose it sticks to the vessels and it makes it hard and so the flow of blood is is hard to go to the to the wounds to heal it for our type 1 patients um, these are mostly young kids because they were born with it um, it happen tend to have like diabetes ketoacidosis um, they become very thirsty they have bli high blood sugar and they tend to burn more ketones because in type 1 they are not producing any insulin unlike type 2 which they are producing insulin but it's not being used type 1 they don't produce any insulin so if they don't take their medication which is the insulin what the body does is it goes to the fat and it burns the fat and then they will have diabetes ketoacidosis um, they will have fruity breath this is when their diabetes um, has elevated their sugar level I'm sorry has elevated and so you smell the fruitiness of their breath for the type 2 patients um, they have carbs issues as, as I said they dehydrate more and they also become confused there are three P's that's associated with a hyperglycemia and this is having high um, blood a high glucose level so the three P's are the polyuria polydyspia and polyphagia polyuria is when you have frequent urination polydyspia is when you have frequent thirst so you tend to be a lot thirsty more often and so you tend to drink a lot, a lot of liquid and poly, polyphagia is when you eat a lot because remember your body is not absorbing the insulin and so your body is telling telling you that listen I need energy I need energy and in order to do so you have to eat and then while you're eating you're drinking as well because you become very thirsty usually in type 2 diabetic patients if they are unable to control it with diets and exercise um, the provider will prescribe medications for them um, these are a few medications I'll be telling you the medication and I'll be telling you um, how it works so there is so the drug is sulfolyase it has a glyberine glyphoside um, amaryl the genetic these genetic names normally end um, in IDES or ZIDES MIDES or RIDES um, what do they do they stimulate the cells to produce insulin um, that may cause hypoglycemia so when your your um, sugar increases it stimulates the cell um, once you take this it stimulates the cell and then it lowers your blood sugar um, what you need to know you should not be drinking any alcohol so absolutely no alcohol consumption because it may cause extreme um, low blood sugar level the other drugs is um, there is also metformin now metformin or, or um, glycophage it is usually held like 48 hours um, prior to surgery um, they watch for renal function it decreases the liver storage and um, it, decre it decreases the liver stores of of glucose and it may cause diarrhea for alpha glu glucoside inhibitors um, these are like starch blockers they you need to take them with food with the first bite of food if possible and it works it works um, it works on the food while you're eating so you should take this medication with food you also have um, Avanalia Glitazone. These decrease the glucose in the liver. 
um, you need to also watch for liver function um, some drugs may cause hypo which is low blood sugar or hyper which is high blood sugar glycemia the drugs that causes low blood sugar um, are beta blockers these are the the medications are metaprolol atinolol um, because these mass they mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia alcohol and aspirin and you have some type of antibiotics that will mask um, hypoglycemia which is low blood pressure and the medications that cause hyperglycemia which is high blood pressure are diuretics these are called water pill like Lasix. Lasix is for the heart so that's a diuretics. You have glutocortisol and you have estro estrogen therapy. So when you're given insulin, insulin is normally given sub-Q. Um, it goes into the fat um, and it's, it's given it's go it's going to the fat and you have to rot you have to rotate this is very important whenever you're given the sub q um insulin you can't always give it to the same side rotate side so if i do it on the left side this morning do it on the right side tonight so on and so forth you can also mix insulin to give um patients there are two types you have clear and you have cloudy um, the clear represents regular insulin and cloudy is um, for NPH there are certain effects that happens to diabetic patient and this is the dawn phenomenon it happens during working hours patients become hyperglycemic so um, their blood their blood sugar increases um why does this happen why does their blood sugar increases this happen in preparation of them waking up so the body shoots um extra glucose and it usually happens between the hours of 5 a.m and 8 a.m um they can't handle the extra glucose because of the issue with their insulin it's either they don't produce insulin for type 1 and type 2 they their body is not able to use the insulin even though it's producing it so to, to help with that they will have to um, take medication so in the morning when they wake up it doesn't affect them there's also the sudden effect it happens when they are sleeping usually between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. there's a drop in the blood sugar so the body so the body fix it and it release it releases it <coughs> um, in between that time there are different types of insulin you have the rapid, rapid short intermediate and long-acting insulin so I'll be just explaining the peak the duration and the onset so for rapid acting the onset is 15 minutes the peak is one hour and the duration is for three hours for short acting the onset is 30 minutes and the peak is two hours and the duration is eight hour, eight hours for intermediate the onset is two hours the peak is eight hours and the duration is 16 hours and for long acting um the onset is two. so for long acting the onset is two hours there's no peak and the duration is 24 hours. onset means when the the drugs start working or the insulin starts to work the peak is when it's reached the climax of the um the medication in full it's, it, it's working in full effect and then the duration is the, the amount of time it lasts the amount of time it will work in the body system.